Good morning, Calvary friends and family. Hi. Happy spring. Did everyone know that it is now officially spring? I think it changed to spring overnight, just like when we lose the hour and gain the hour and it becomes a different season. It's all when we sleep. And then magically you wake up and it's spring, except it snowed on me on the way. Anyone else? Yeah. It's okay. It's almost done. I feel like we can tolerate snow a lot easier now because we know it might be the last snowfall, right? March break just finished as well. Anyone have March break? Yeah, we got some March breakers. Anyone's life just always March break? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Someday. Someday. (laughs) Uh, we had some fun with the youth over the March break. If, you, if your feet crunch anything in, on the floor in the sanctuary, I was responsible for vacuuming after a movie night, and there was some chips and popcorn consumed, so hopefully I got it all. It's probably not good to eat, so FYI, don't put it in your mouths, okay? And uh, yeah, we had some fun on, on the break watching some movies, also got to do some road trips, and that kind of thing. So hopefully you guys had fun as well. I was going to get you to pause and think of one fun thing you did over either the break or the spring or this last little bit as the season's changing. So maybe you could lean over to someone close to you and share one thing you did this week, even if it wasn't a break for you, you did stuff, right? Yeah. So lean across, share something you did Spring-related, March break-related, or not. What's that? Oh. Well, and, yeah. And you have to do it at this time of year. It's everywhere. Rhonda was saying she went to the museum and she thought that there was dancing. She was the garbage under the snow. <laughs> See, I knew you did stuff. I can hear the rumblings of conversation. Um, Kathy was sharing that she picked up garbage with her granddaughter this week, and I was commenting that we all have to pick up garbage at this time of year. The snow, that lovely snow melts, and then it gets brown, and then you see all the stuff that was lodged in the snow over the winter. Yeah, so... Um, We're going to dive into some announcements. If you are online, again, please make sure you say hi in the chat. You can share as well things that you're doing this spring or over the break in the chat. There's some links for offering. We'll have prayer after the service, both in person here um, in the back of the sanctuary and online. The prayer room will be open this week after the service, so make sure you utilize those links. I'm going to like walk through the week with you. So after Sunday, um, the next thing that I want to highlight is Tuesday. We have a men's group starting up on Tuesday. Woo woo. And it's happening in person. Yeah, right? So Tuesday night, 7.30 here at the church. Masks still required at that point. And they are going to dive into a series by Francis Chan called crazy love. So encourage any man to come out and join that. And you can just show up on Tuesday night and and join the group here at the church. Okay, now I'm going to fast forward all the way to next Sunday. There's still stuff happening in between then and now and then. Um, And I actually want to highlight, did you know that the church building is being used by our community now? How great is that? We have a great facility, and we actually have a group coming in from Waterloo that services youth in Waterloo, and they use our gym and youth space and stuff, and that's happening this week, one of the nights. So just, you know, did you know? There you go, tidbits of information. But fast forward to next Sunday. Next Sunday is our monthly encounter service. So Sunday at 7 o'clock would encourage you to put that on your schedule and come It is a great time of both worship, just getting in a space to come before God, and always a great time to hear from God, both for yourself, for other people, from other people, from God. It's a 
beautiful time to, uh, of, of reflection and, and worship. So I encourage you to put that on your schedule for next Sunday. Who likes chocolate? Yeah, me too. So I wanted to also tell you that the Refugee Settlement Committee is doing a chocolate fundraiser just in time for Easter. So if you are a truffle lover, go to the events page. You can find out how to order, but it's through Lori, give a wave Lori, and Jean, who is away this week. But the two of them are coordinating that. If you go to the events page, you can see how to order your truffles. $10, $15, the more money you spend, the more truffles you get. <laughs> right? And there we go. I and Kathy said already ordered them, so there you go. Get on it. So that's happening, and we'll all, of course, all those funds go to support the families that we are helping to bring here and settle in Canada. So that would be great if you were able to help support that and eat some chocolate. I wanted to update you, too, on the masking and mandate requirements. So we had announced last week that we knew that that was going to be changing provincially, and it changes provincially on Monday, and wanted to highlight that our board is meeting this week, and so they will be talking through that and giving us some updates and, and how that will change at Calvary. So we're gonna pause the Wednesday Calvary Connects so that we can wait for all of that information. And we will put Calvary Connects out on Thursday this week instead. And in Calvary Connects, we'll have all the new information and, and anything that you're wondering. If you don't get Calvary Connects, reach out to Wendy at our front office on Thursday or Friday, and then you can get all the updates because uh, we'll likely have a few shifts for next Sunday and then to follow. So I wanted to let you know about that. I think those are all the details. So uh, why don't we take a moment to just come before God. We want to um, look at him, pause, brush off anything, and, and, and come before him to worship him this morning. So why don't we do that in a conversation with him? So... Would you join me? Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we love you and we intentionally took a step toward you this morning by coming here, by logging on. God, we know that you love us. And God, we know that you have plans and a purpose for us. And God, we know that you love to lead us into all of that, into relationship with you, into full and abundant life. And so we just want to take a step toward you this morning. We want to stand before you. God, would you deepen our understanding of you this morning? How big you are, how holy you are, how powerful you are, what a provider you are, what a lover you are. God, would you deepen that understanding this morning? Would you draw us closer to you? Because more than anything, God, we want to be in a relationship with you. We want to hear your voice. And we want to speak and worship you this morning. So would you stand right now? And God, we, we stand up knowing that we can walk into your presence and stand in your presence because you made us as masterpieces. You love us and you put your glory in us. And so we stand before you this morning. Would you direct our eyes to you? Would we worship you? sing praises to you and in this next 
these next couple songs, in this next time, would we find our own voice in the lyrics that we sing, that it would become a conversation between our hearts and yours, God. Because we just want to worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just wait till that. There we go. Happy March break for those of you who uh, have kids at home. Perhaps you're feeling like, oh, this is the best day of March break because tomorrow kids go back to school. For those of you, for those of you who are teachers, perhaps not. Uh, but uh, today we want to um, carry on. We're just pausing a little bit. I want to go back um, to a scripture we were looking at a few weeks ago, Hebrews 12. Uh, if you remember, we were talking about how God calls us to be a church, calls us to be people who move, that God actually has a direction for us, life for us, purposes for us, calling on our lives. And he's saying, come follow me, move, and you will see me work. You are the light of the world. And where you go, you bring light. You have purposes, and what you carry is not just for you, not just for between you and God, but what, you, what God is doing in you is meant to pour out on the world. And so Hebrews 12, after talking about in chapter 11, uh, many of the great heroes of the faith who have pursued and kept moving after God even though they haven't seen the promises of God fulfilled who kept being faithful no matter what, those people lead up to chapter 12, and, and then chapter 12, he says, so with such a great cloud of witnesses around us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, <laughs> endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Therefore, do not grow weary. Yeah. So let's pray as we begin, as we look at Scripture, and we're going to dive in today to that, that part about throwing off, when you get thrown down, when you get discouraged or defeated, get up, keep moving. Jesus is leading you. Holy Spirit, would you come? Thank you for meeting us in worship. Thank you that as we sang, holy, 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 the angels joined in with us and said, oh, they're singing our song. They who with unveiled faces see Jesus in all his glory, and we here join it together with heaven's song, holy, holy, holy. Thank you, God, that we get to worship you, that we have the privilege of drawing close to you, that we can fix our eyes upon you. And so open our eyes to see you today, Jesus. Open our hearts to know your love and your comfort and your grace and your strength. Would you lift off any weights that have weighed us down, any things that have tripped us up, and help us to get back up again? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to uh, take us back to February. Do you remember the Olympics? There was winter before the grass showed up. Isn't that amazing? And there were birds singing this morning. There were birds singing. I'm just saying, spring is coming. Anyway, back at the Olympics, I, I just happened to turn it on one morning and watched um, the mixed snowboard cross race. So just to set it up, um, picture people on snowboards, and instead of just one person doing tricks, it's a race of four people uh, going down, doing jumps, uh, doing bumps and things, and 
and spinning around a course to get to the end, and the, and the first person to get to the end wins normally. But a mixed cross means that you have a men's group that runs first, the four that go down, and then the women's group that goes down second. And so this, I just happened to turn it on. It was like, I don't know, seven o'clock in the morning and this race was about to happen the men had already run so the men r came down and the Canadians were th in third place they had the bronze and so the, the, the way they do it is that the the people that are first second and third stand in the medal position waiting for the next group to come down to see if they are going to stay in the medal position or not so there's four teams three medals to be won. the Canadians are in third and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get her name right, but uh, Marietta Odine, I don't know, uh, it is, was the Canadian woman, woman's part of the team, and she was about to run. Um, so just to set it up so you know, the race is about to start. You're going to watch a little clip of it. But the reason it stuck with me is what I want to unpack today. So we're, we're going to watch just a couple seconds of the start of the race. So if you can get that ready to go there, Tucker. All right. Did you see that? I wish we could go back. So up, going up the ramp, and the person in fourth is like, I'm not going to be in fourth anymore. Kaboom! And there's that moment. And I'm watching that. It has stuck with me for the last months because I feel like and this Friday, I was walking with somebody again, and we, we met on Thursday night, a number of us who, who pray and are trying to sense, what is God saying? We met on Thursday night, and there was this sense that, and Asanju, who's going to share a prayer and a word later uh, on video, Asanju and a number of us were feeling like there are so many people that feel exactly that way, that going on the race, and suddenly it feels like something landed on you. You just get knocked off course. You get knocked down. You get weighed down. Have you felt like that? Like maybe it's COVID. Like you were just thinking, oh, finally things are opening up. It's almost Christmas and Omicron. Or maybe you felt like, oh, finally things are lightening up and, and they're saying that the masks are going to come off and then war. Or maybe you were like, oh, finally I can get out of my house and then health. Or maybe it's just the, the dreariness, um, the seasonal affective disorder, that sense of like, I am just so discouraged. For, and I don't even know where it came from. It just feels like something snuck up behind me as I was going and boom, knocked me down. Have you felt that way? Perhaps... Uh, and so I was walking with somebody on Friday and they were just going through a list of all of the things going on that were knocking, that had felt like they had knocked them off course. And I found myself saying to them what I want to say to us today. There will be times where you feel knocked off course, but don't give up. And I want to unpack that for us today because the truth is, that just like in Hebrews, yes, sin will easily entangle. And yes, things will trip us up. Yes, but fix your eyes on Jesus and run the race. I started to unpack that scripture a couple weeks ago, but I really feel like this section I need to unpack. If you feel like Marietta O'Dine or however you pronounce her name, if you feel like you've been knocked off course or if you're racing alongside somebody who's got knocked down, if you have been walking with somebody who's in that boat, God has something he wants to say to you. And it's from this. The thing is, in that moment, and... I don't know if you can, if you can uh, imagine that moment, but in that moment where, where you're knocked down, you have this choice. Like, imagine what she is thinking in that moment. She is in third place. She was actually coming up to second place, and suddenly, boom. And you, you have to think, the race is over. This is my Olympic dream, and it's over. 
And so there's this moment when we get knocked over where we start to think, this is who I am. You know, and so perhaps in the last few weeks when you've been hearing us say, you are the light of the world and where you go, you bring Christ's light. Perhaps when you've heard, like, we are a church that moves and so get up and move, you go, I, you don't understand. I'm not the light of the world. I'm the person who, who's been knocked down. I'm disqualified from the race. I'm, uh, you, you, don't, you don't know, like, I, I just, I, I'm the person who's broken. I can't do it. Or there's no point. And if you feel that way, I think we need to hear Hebrews 11 again. Or Hebrews 12 again. There we go. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, every snowboard that lands upon us, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race marked out for us. See, the truth is the race is already won. In that particular race, uh, uh, um, Elliot Grandin uh, was uh, in third place already. He was waiting, and all she had to do really was cross uh, Marietta. All she had to do was cross the finish line, and they would have at least the bronze medal. All she had to do was get up and get to the end to get the medal. You and I, though, we're in a race too, Hebrews says. And it says that Jesus has already placed. Jesus is already in the gold medal position and has already said, I have won the race. I just want to celebrate it with you. Get up. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just get up. Hmm. <laughs> When, uh, when they interviewed Elliot Grondin about the race, he said there was this crazy moment where, where they could see on the big camera what, what everybody on the TV was watching, and so they saw the crash. And then they, the camera pans to the two that are continuing to race, and so he's standing in metal position, and he cannot see, because of where the course is, what's going on with his partner. He can't see if she's going to get up. He can't see if she's hurt. He doesn't know what's going on. All they know is that they have the two people cross for gold, gold and silver, and he's waiting to see what's going to happen. Jesus, Scripture says, endured the cross, scorned its shame, and waits in heaven, knows that you are supposed to be part of his victory. No matter what has tripped you up, no matter what has knocked you down, he says, I look at you and you are a metal contender. Just get up. You have my grace, my mercy. I will meet you there. Hmm. Hmm. Hebrews uh, 6 says that Jesus is like an anchor in heaven and you are anchored to him and he is pulling you like a boat being pulled uh, on the anchor rope towards shore. Jesus is anchored in heaven with you and you are being pulled by him, drawn by him to heaven. He is so committed to you. He has already won the victory. So the truth is, if we want to just keep going, stuff will knock you down. And I think that's one of the problems with the Christian uh, life is that we only hear the success stories, right? Or we hear the complete failure stories and not, never the other side of it. We hear about the missionaries who go and suddenly an entire country is changed or somebody who goes and, and you know, Mother Teresa who, fee who feeds the poor and starts up a ministry, but we don't see the in-between times the times that are knocked down, the difficult times. But the truth is, and Jesus says, in this life you will have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world. <laughs> See, stuff will knock you down. When I was, um, this is well, quite 25 years ago, did you know that I've been ordained for 25 years this year? I know, you, you, I know, right? This, this June, and you say, you look so young. How, you got ordained when you were two? I know, I know, right? Anyway, um, 
I was in the middle of uh, ma my Master of Divinity, and um, uh, that and that spring um, was a really rough spring. Um, my father had prostate cancer. Um, uh, my best friend, who I had lived with for about four years, uh, d uh, got got engaged and and moved out to get married. So suddenly everything was changing. I was doing uh, about forty hours of youth work a week while doing my schooling. And in the midst of doing that uh, youth work, I was dealing with two uh, uh, te teens that were suicidal, and it was just exhausting. And you just constantly were living with this season of like, what will happen? Like, can I do enough? Am I messing up? Am I making it worse for them? In the midst of that friend who I've prayed with for mm, 35 years now, um, at that time had a nervous breakdown in the midst of doing ministry. In the midst of all that, just things just seemed so dark and so dreary, and the only job I could get at that time was uh, a soul-sucking job. I worked for a bank, taking money out of students' banks' accounts that had, were in arrears for paying their student loans. <laughs> I'm a student with no money, taking students' money. I felt more for the student than I did <laughs> for the bank. That was where things were at. It was bleak and dark. And so I literally felt like, I don't, know, I don't know if I can keep doing ministry. I felt like I had been smacked down in the middle of the race. And, and, I, and so I literally, I, I dropped, uh, I slowed down my Master of Divinity. And so instead of taking a full course load, I took one course. I kept working. Um, I, I'm, I'm found an apartment four doors down from my parents. I felt like I was going somewhere in the world. Uh, it was just one of those times. Maybe you felt that way, that you just feel stuck, that you're spinning, and you don't know if you can do it. In the middle of that, I read the uh, a praise in Proverbs, and it said, the wise man falls and gets back up. It was in a passage, a section of, of Proverbs that talks about the fool does this, the wise person does this. And then there's this verse that said, the wise man falls and gets back up again. And I realized in reading that, sitting in this dark, dingy, moldy apartment, I, I looked at it and I said, well, the only difference between a wise person and a fool, both of them fall, but a wise person gets back up. It doesn't really matter to God if you stumble and fall, if you get up again. It's part of a, so I wrote a couple songs out of that season. One of them was that. Hmm. Stuff will land on you. Stuff from the outside, maybe it's circumstances, maybe it's other things. So if you're walking with a friend and they start going through all the things that are landing on them, you can say, yeah, I've been there too. Sometimes stuff knocks you down. And the only wise thing to do is get back up. Jesus is cheering for you, and I'm cheering for you. Maybe the stuff that trips you up, like, Proverbs, like Hebrews says, is your own stuff. Sometimes when stuff lands on you, <laughs> when, when you're feeling the stress and the weight of life, when you're feeling the things happening to you, sometimes when you're... When you're having a weight pressing down on you, it knocks you off balance and the weak parts of you come out. So maybe you feel like Hebrews says, the sin that so easily entangles. But the answer is still the same. The wise person gets back up again. Doesn't matter if you stumble and fall if you get up again. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know this at the time that I was watching the Olympic race but Marietta O'Dine, uh, I read her, some of her story later, and it, it feels like she wasn't, um, falling down wasn't new to her. Like, in this moment that she gets knocked down at the end of the race, or in the middle of the race, here's some of the background of her life that could inform her saying, maybe I should just give up. In 2018, uh, when she was supposed to be going to the Olympics the first time, she had a concussion and had to drop out. She spent a couple of years recovering. In 2020, in the midst of recovering, her brother died of a brain tumor. Uh, because of COVID, uh, even as she was recovering and back to racing, all, 
almost so many of the competitions were canceled, so her only resume to even qualify for the Canadian team was a 2017 World Championship. And in the midst of that, she started to crack, like just had to deal with the weight of things on her own life. She lost her mojo. And so she started to go to counseling. She started to seek out help. She started to uh, do physical recovery so that she could get back. So when she gets knocked down in the race, can you imagine her thinking, maybe I should just stay here. Maybe that's who I am, the person who gets knocked out at the end. But (sighs) the wise person gets up. (laughs) In that time of burnout for me, I also came across a hymn. It's a Charles Wesley hymn. Um, most of, a lot of the times Charles Wesley would write hymns that were theology. He was writing things to help people know the truth about Jesus, the truth about our faith. And so many of the hymns that we sing are his hymns. A lot of the Christmas hymns are his hymns saying this is true about God and this is, our, this is true our response. And we sing it so we learn it. But this hymn, Approach My Soul, The Mercy Seat, is a very personal hymn. It's it's one of those hymns that is him talking about his own life. And and I came across this hymn in the middle of this season of me uh, kind of in burnout mode and wondering, can I ever go about a ministry again? And he uses the image of the Old Testament temple where the God dwelt in the Holy of Holies uh, and at the very center of the Holy of Holies where God dwells, where God meets people, is the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. So that the picture is that we can come and sit in the presence of God in his mercy. The line says, approach my soul, the mercy seat, where Jesus answers prayer. He starts talking to himself. Humbly fall before his feet, for none can perish there. Thy promise is my only plea, and with this I venture nigh. Thou callest burdened souls to thee, and such, O Lord, am I. Bow down beneath a load of sin, by Satan sorely pressed, by war without, does that sound familiar? And fear within, I come to thee for rest. And I read that hymn, and it spoke to exactly how I felt, just knocked down. Can I do it? Do I have enough in me? And so I, I kind of wrote a tune for it, and we're going to do that for you now. But as we do, uh, feel free to sing along. Sing for yourself if you feel like you've been knocked down because the truth is Jesus is at the finish line, and he is cheering for you. He has already paid the price. He has already won on your behalf. Just get up. Approach the soul of mercy, the the seat of mercy, and he will meet you there. Is it possible that the reason you are knocked down, the reason that your friend is knocked down, is it possible that being knocked down can become where you bow down and say, God, I just need you. You're already down. You might as well turn it into prayer, right? Right? The times that we are knocked down don't need to be defeat. They can be the moment where we invite the one who is the victor to step in and be the one who is on our side and says, you've already won. Just get up and let's finish the race together. We're going to sing that song, and I just want to invite you to, you can sing it along as you learn the tune, or you can just listen and let the words speak to you. And then right out of that, Asanju's going to, um, on the video, is just going to share Uh, a word that she had that she felt like people in our community need to hear this, that think that God is saying this, and then she's going to pray for us. And then we'll kind of pull back again and go, okay, what do we do about this? I just love the... (laughs) When God says the same thing to so many different people in so many different ways and I just love the different voices that can minister to us I think today if you get a chance to go for prayer um, 
Kathy, I think, uh, is going to be at the side over here, and I think there's online prayer as well. But, uh, you know, if you've been feeling the weight of things, and maybe it was you're for yourself, or maybe you've been feeling the weight for people, because it's been weighty, isn't it? Um, it's so good to come together and go, oh, you're not alone and not only are you not alone carrying this, let's hand it to Jesus, but you're also like, you're feeling stuff that other people are feeling too. You're not crazy, right? So come for prayer at the end or turn to a neighbor and just say, hey, like, how are you doing? Like, let's support one another. Hmm. Um, if, uh, if you can just bring up the next slide there, there's the, you, you didn't get to really see it, but there was some, uh, photos taken. Uh, so remember seeing her crash and the two, the two women crashed at the bottom of a jump. And, and so, um, while you've got, um, the Elliot Grandine waiting at the end to see if, if she will win uh, or even get there. They are stuck off camera. Now, picture snowboarding. So your feet are bound in and you're on the ground and you could get up normally and just kind of push yourself off and start going, but they had to go uphill. So even just to get up, unfortunately, both of them were fine. They both get up and they have to literally like crawl, hobble up the hill and then sort of fall off the jump and start going again. <laughs> she, she, when they were interviewing her, she said, uh, she called it a bear crawl. She said, she said after she fell on me and smashed down, I got back up and then I, and she said it was like all my training of cardio came into view. It was like, she was literally like using all of her strength just to get up the jump to get back down again. Isn't that crazy? So when you hear the word, when you hear the word, just get up, it's not so simple, is it? When you've fallen. Like maybe you're bruised and aching inside or outside, but getting up might not be pretty. So I just want to say to all of us, not only does Jesus not think that the lack, let me say it again. Jesus thinks when you are getting up that that's awesome. He's not looking and going, that looks not so awesome. It might not be pretty. You're getting back up again. But it's worth it. It might not be immediate. It's okay that it takes some time to start getting going again, but it's so worth getting going again. Hibernation is over. The winter is over and come. You are not broken like Asanju said. Just get up hobbling, crawling, whatever it is, because there's such good things awaiting. I've been reading um, Terry O'Reilly's, it's a secular book, uh, Terry O'Reilly's book, he's an ad guy, he's on, uh, uh, does a radio show. Uh, anyways, he wrote a book called My Best Mistake, and it's written my biggest, and then the, uh, it's crossed out so that it spells best. And he, the, book is, the book is literally his stories of people who have made huge mistakes, who have let that become something that turned things around for them. And the names in it are great. It's a great story. So you've got, I know, you're right. So you've got, uh, you've got the who. And the, time, the thing that turned around the who was the time that accidentally this struggling band, the, the Pete Townsend, smashed his guitar and broke it, and these two girls laughed at him. And so he smashed the guitar on the ground, and everybody started coming to see the shows because this was the band that smashes their guitars. <laughs> Kellogg's Cornflake Guy, who they accidentally, they were running a sanatorium, a health sanatorium, and they accidentally made cornflakes. And it was a mistake, but they, the, the people loved it, and so they started selling it. 
Rob Lowe, who had this terrible um, experience that humbled him and turns around his life and be realizes that he can do comedy and he ends up in, in having a whole second career after, after a huge fall. Steve Jobs, who, start, who gets fired from his own company and spends 12 years sort of in tech purgatory. But during that time is the time that he came up with the, the, the groundbreaking things that when he finally came back to Apple, came iPods and iPhones and air, earbuds and all of these things were things that came up in his heart and his imagination and with the team when he first came back. My best mistake is just this beautiful, fun, encouraging book, how when we fall down can actually be the thing that leads us to great victory. Hebrews 11 is that with God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, the list of heroes of the faith are all people who's failed spectacularly. And we won't go into it today, but if you feel that you got knocked down and you failed spectacularly, just imagine what God can do. So it won't be pretty, but instead of focusing on what it looks like right here as you crawl up the hill, just get up, get going, because God will do something as you lay before God your spectacular failure. Hmm. I love how Paul, who is also one of those heroes of the faith, who say, I know it feels like you're knocked down, and, and that's so hard, but it's worth getting up, and I'll walk with you, and God will walk with you. I think that's when the, Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews was saying, throw off the weights that weigh us down and the sin that so easily entangles. I think they were writing from their own experience. I think they were saying, you're going to get knocked down, but throw it off, get back up, keep your eyes on Jesus, because the race is going to be won. So, let's just, get let's just get practical for a couple seconds, and then we're going to move into prayer and worship. How do you get back up spiritually? I mean, obviously, there's physical getting back up. Well, the first thing to do is forgive. I suspect there's a moment where Marietta O'Dine uh, could have just focused on, you know, hobbling up on her snowboard and going, you did this to me, you know? I could have won the Olympics, but you. But instead, shakes it off, climbs up the hill, and keeps going. Spiritually, we can focus on those who have hurt us, those who have knocked us down, those who have played a part in the point where we are smashed out in front of everybody. And to forgive somebody is not to say that didn't happen or it didn't hurt or it doesn't mean something it does. But to forgive somebody is to say, God, I hand you this. This hurt this person did, this, this hard thing. I hand you all of that because I want to get back up and keep going for you. I don't want to be stuck there. It's way more complicated than the two seconds I'm giving it to this morning. But just if you find yourself getting up, one of the things you could do is just say, God, would you help me forgive so-and-so? I hand them to you. Help me to keep forgiving. Another thing we can do as we are getting up is focus on celebrating the victory that Jesus has already won for us. I suspect when she smashed out, she knew, if I can just get up, if I can just get through, the, cross the finish line, a bronze medal is waiting for us. And sure enough, that's what happens. On the other side of crawling up that thing, she gets back on the board, crosses the line, and Canada got a bronze medal. That's crazy. 
Focus on the victory that's already prepared for you. No matter how much you screw up, no matter how much you fall down, whether there's a war without or fear within, Jesus, I'm going to keep moving. I hand you this stuff. Hmm. And along with that, focus on what is before you, not behind you. Like Asanju said, God has such good, life-giving things for you and to do through you. He doesn't consider you disqualified. He doesn't consider you broken. He does not consider you out. Not only has he won a victory for you, but he wants to work through you. And the very things that you will receive from God in your coming before him for mercy and grace and strength are the very things that God will use to encourage somebody else, to run alongside them, to cheer them on, to say, I can offer you this comfort because I've received it. I can offer you this hope because I know that I felt hopeless and he gave me this hope. I can offer you some tricks of dealing with the thing that tripped you up because I walked through that too. So I want to pray for us. And uh, we're going to worship in just a second. But if you'd be willing, would you just put yourself in a position of saying, here I am, God, and I give you the stuff. And then I just want to bless you with God's love and grace. For me, often when I am handing stuff over to God, I literally picture myself handing it to God. Sometimes I turn my hands upside down so that I can't hold on to it anymore. Do something that helps you, before God, hand over. God, today we come before you. <laughs> Some of us um, feel like our feet are locked together and we're scrambling up a hill just to get going. Getting up is, is it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. But we turn our attention to you. And we want to hand you the things that have tripped us up. God, today we hand you hmm, people who have hurt us. We hand you the things that didn't work out relationships, jobs, dreams that cause us to feel discouraged and weighed down. We hand to you our own messing up. How we treated our children. How we treated our spouse. The things that where we didn't live up to who we want to be because we know that you know and care for us and we can be just honest with you. This tripped me up, Jesus. Would you help me get up? <laughs> you meet us in your mercy and compassion. That's who you are. And that's our starting place today. And Jesus, as we give the weights and the stuff that entangles us, we also give you the weight of the world. <laughs> God, we pray that you would bring peace in our world. We pray that you would care for your people and that you would comfort and restore and rescue and redeem. We pray that you would bring light in dark places like the Ukraine, <laughs> persecuted peoples, the famine in the Sudan. God, these are such big things that they can feel like only a weight. But as we hand them to you, we also ask that you would show us how we can help. 
We want to be a light in the darkness. We want to <laughs> chase after the thing that you're putting in front of us to do, to care for someone else. Our neighbor, our church, our neighborhood, our world. Fix our eyes on us, on you, Jesus, and show us what you are doing and how we can help. Bring your mercy and your love in this world. We start with you, but we finish with who you love. We start with you because we know that it's you working through us that brings life and hope to others. Work through us, Jesus. We want to move when you move. Pause when you pause. Run the race that you have marked out for us. And lift up the fallen along the way. Hmm. Would you take a moment in silence and just pray for whatever God is putting in your focus right now? Say, Jesus, what's on your heart? And maybe it's for the world. Maybe it's for a friend. Pray for someone else right now. Ask God for his mercy and grace. Just going to declare again the words that Assange spoke. My beloved, you are not broken. Hibernation is over. I think for some of you, you get to walk away with that first word from your heavenly Father saying, My beloved, you are not broken. And others get to really be rallied in hearing the hibernation is over. So may you leave this place knowing that your God is there if you feel bruised, if you feel like you've fallen, that you have a community that wants to come alongside you and help pick you up as awkward and clumsy as you may look in the process. We have our prayer teams open to help you do that even this morning, to encourage you, to bless you, but if there's something bigger that you need help stepping into, that's why we have small groups. That's why we want to make ourselves available. We have pastoral care. We as a staff, we want to say, if you're feeling stuck, if you need help getting up, please, this week, will you reach out? Because we want to be a church that moves to help one another get up. And may we head into this week with our eyes fixed on what's ahead. Because family, the hibernation is over. So go into the week. Have a fabulous uh, day. Enjoy time with family, friends. Uh, enjoy some fellowship here in the space as well. Um, head for prayer. May God bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.